morning, beloved. I'm Pastor Kiyomo Butler. This is Restoration Victory Ministries. Hope all is well with you and your families. Hey, listen, I'm really, really, really excited just to jump right into what we have to say today. You know, what the Holy Spirit of God is going to lead me to say. So let's just jump right into it. Flex your authority. Flex your authority. Live in your authority. Live in victory. Listen, through the blood of Jesus, man, we have received so many wonderful and beautiful promises. And throughout the body of Christ, throughout the ages, even from the inception of the body of Christ, there's really been two things that has really stopped us from truly, as a whole, uh, individually, some of us actually achieved this. So this is not an, uh, a universal message saying that everyone does this, but humbly speaking, uh, humbly speaking, not trying to offend anyone, 99% of the body of Christ suffers from either one or both of these things that we're going to talk about today. I suffer from either one or both of these things that we're going to talk about today. And it's going to be really important for us to truly, truly grasp this. So the Holy Spirit of God says, listen, shake it, shake it off. Forget or don't forget, but deprogram your mind to anything that's traditional or that's religious or that's denominational that you have been taught, as I have all throughout my life, that you believe or any understanding that you have gotten uh, from ministers, from preachers, from teachers, from other friends, from Christian circles, and, and really let the word of God speak. To us this morning because in the end it's about the word of God it's about the power of God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ it's not about your opinions it's not about your emotions well let me rephrase that it's not about our opinions it's not about our emotions it's not about what makes us comfortable it's not about what has happened to us in our lives so we've come to believe this based upon our experiences it really has nothing to do with none of that has to do with faith, has to do with the Holy Spirit and the power of God. And it has to do with the word of God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we're going to start there. But before we jump right into this, let's, let's bow our heads for a quick moment of prayer. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for life. We thank you for breath. We thank you for our desire to serve and worship you. We ask, Holy Father, that the word will go forth this morning. All of you, none of me, that it will touch us in our spirit, man. It will renew our mind so that we can prove the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So let me start there. This is going to be a, a two-part teaching this morning. And listen, I have my time on. I promise you guys, I won't be with you. You know, it won't be a me saying I'm about to close, I'm about to close, I'm about to close and never close. This will be a 20, 25 minute, minute uh, message. So just bear with me for a little while as we dig into this. Two things that we're going to deal with today. The power, the Holy Spirit and the power of God. And then our flesh. The Holy Spirit and the power of God versus faith or, or versus our logical mind. I'm sorry. Our logical mind. And then the Spirit of God versus our flesh. Now, listen, I always say this, so we just have to put this out there. Every, we're going to start here. Everything that we do is through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Romans 1 and 16. I am not, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God, the power of God unto salvation to them that believe, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, in the gospel of Jesus Christ, is the righteousness of God revealed from heaven, from faith to faith for the just shall live by their faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Salvation, we know salvation in the Greek, the word soteria, and, and the salvation means, you know, all the words that we've kind of indoctrinalized or, 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 or made into religions or, or we've actually, you know, uh, have creeds and different things around different words, you know, redeem, uh, salvation, 
peace. They all really in in the Hebrew and in the Greek. They all really kind of intertwine. So I'm just going to use salvation today. Soteria, being made whole, being made set, free, being set free, being delivered, having the ransom paid, being rescued, being in right standing, safe. This all is what we have through the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're redeemed through the gospel of Jesus Christ, through the blood of Jesus. So Jesus and Jesus only, but through the gospel of Jesus Christ, the full gospel of Jesus Christ, starting here, the full gospel of Jesus Christ, not the full gospel of your understanding, you know, your logical mind. Your, listen, we all, we all, we're spirits. We have a soul. We live in a body. We're not a soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellectual thinking. We're not a soul with a living in a body with a spirit. We're not a body with a soul and a spirit. We're spiritual beings. Have a soul. We live in a body. So the spiritual things are the things that should make the most sense to us. The spiritual things are the things that are the most real to us. But as Christians, a lot of us have allowed our logical mind, our mind, our will, our emotions, our intellect to come in and it makes some of the things that God said in his word null and void because we don't accept it, because we can't believe it, because it doesn't make sense to us, because we just don't like it, because it makes us uncomfortable. All these different things, we do that and we, what we try to do is we try to make the word of God fit our logic instead of renewing our mind to fit the word of God. Re the Bible says to be renewed in the spirit of your mind so that you can prove what is the good, the perfect, and the acceptable will of God. But what we try to do is we try to renew our spirit to fit our mind. And when you do that, it just won't work. You have to renew your mind with the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Renew the spirit of your mind, which means that your spirit controls your mind. We can't try to control our spirit with our mind. Our mind has to be controlled by the spirit. And the things of the spirit come from the word of God. Listen, one of the most damning things for the body of Christ, and I've heard a minister say this. This is our part one, is we don't believe and accept the power of God. I heard a minister say one time that God don't do that kind of stuff no more. I've never seen that in the Bible. The Bible says, I am the Lord, I change not. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The Bible says that the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. So I've never seen the Bible say, well, God don't work like that no more, y'all. God don't do that anymore. I know Jesus said it. I know the Bible said it, but God, God has changed his mind on that point. God, that, that's not valid for y'all. And listen, because we are not taught this as children, because listen, I grew up in the church and I was never taught this side, the power side where I grew up. You know, nowadays we, they used to call it the charismatic ministry. You know, when people believed in certain things, they believed what the Bible said about the Holy Spirit, the power, the victory. They called it charismatic ministry. It, it, it really is in the word of God, but we have discredited it because it doesn't make us comfortable as a whole. It doesn't make us feel good. We can't rationalize it. Our logical mind can't make sense of it. And because we can't rationalize it, because we can't logically make it make sense, we have decided that it's not part of the gospel. We discredit it. And beloved, that, that just can't be. That just can't be. The power of God in the book of Acts, first chapter, I call it the words in red because that's really the only time that Jesus spoke in the book of Acts. He was speaking to the disciples. He said, remain in Jerusalem until you receive the, the promise of the Father, which you have also heard from me. John baptized you with water, but you should truly be baptized with the Holy Spirit and the power not many days from now. That was verse, starting at verse four. Then at verse eight, first chapter Acts, he said, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And then you'll be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. You, have, you shall receive power. 
2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, we have not received the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. The Bible says that you have not received the spirit of fear under bondage, but the spirit of adoption, by which you cry, our Father, the Holy Spirit, bearing witness with your spirit that you are children of God. And if you are children of God, then you are heirs of God and you are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. The Bible says that what know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, which you have in you, which you have from God. You are not your own. You were blood bought with the price. So glorify God in your whole body and in your whole spirit, which belongs to him. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, listen, Jesus says, go out in the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believes that and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be condemned. And these signs shall follow him that believes. He shall cast out demons. He shall speak in tongues. He shall lay his hands on the sick and never shall recover. If he drinks anything deadly or poisonous, it shall not hurt him. Jesus also said, behold, I give you power and authority over serpents and scorpions and all the weapons of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Jesus also said, peace, shalom. Peace I give unto you, my own peace do I leave unto you, not as the world gives do I give. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let your heart be afraid. All these things that Jesus has given us, all these things that the word says that we have, the power and authority to be victorious, we don't walk in and we don't operate in the majority of the body of Christ. Not everyone, the majority of the body of Christ. We don't walk in and we don't operate in because... We don't believe like we have convinced ourselves that God don't work like that anymore or in our logical mind that just don't make sense or that just I'm too smart for that. Or that's just that's part of my words, but that's stupid. That don't make sense. God, God don't work like that no more. We have developed such a hoping and a wishing and a praying type of Christianity that in the book of Acts, the apostles and the disciples didn't have. That's not how they operated. We want to be like them. We want to be like Christ. Well, praise God. Being like Christ don't just mean walking in love like Christ. Being like Christ meaning also means having the thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came that you should have life and life more abundantly. So being like Christ is walking in that life and life more abundantly. Knowing who you are. Flexing your authority on the devil because the devil's been flexing his authority on us since Adam. Excuse me. Listen, the devil is out there doing his thing. He's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. But we don't walk in life and life more abundantly. We don't believe that we have peace, supernatural shalom. We don't believe that we can cast out demons, speak in tongues, lay our hands on the sick, and they shall recover. We don't believe that we have power and authority over serpents and scorpions and all the weapons of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. And we can't walk in the full victory. Again, you know, restoration, victory. Everything is about walking in victory on this earth. We cannot walk in full victory if we don't believe, accept, respect, and own that we, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We have the spirit and the power of God on the inside of us. Believe it and accept it. Own it. Pray for it. Meditate on it. Covet to have that power. Like Paul said in the, in the Bible, covet to prophesy? Well, we need to covet to have the Holy Spirit and the power of God upon us. We need to believe that that power is available to us. We need to walk in that victory through the blood of Jesus that is on the inside of us. Now, I'm going to show you two quick things and I'm going to move on to the second part. But right now, we're still dealing with the power that we have received through the Holy Spirit. I just showed you, Jesus said, I say these things to you now. He was talking to the apostles and disciples then. I say these things to you now that in me you may have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Who is in me? Jesus Christ, God the Father, the Holy Spirit of power, the power of God, Holy Spirit, I'm sorry, and power of God on the inside of me. Who is in the world? The wicked one, the enemy, the thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have power and authority over that. So 
reason why I'm not operating in that power and that authority, the reason why I'm not seeing these victories in my life on a daily basis, is because truthfully, if we peel back all, we just peel this onion back all the way down to the bottom, if we're really honest with ourselves, at some point we have decided that we don't believe that God works like that anymore. We don't, now God's grace and his mercy is his grace and his mercy. God said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and whom I will, I will harden. His grace, his mercy, his compassion that he has for us, he will reach down and deliver us when we're going through things because we don't know and we don't understand and we don't realize the power that he has given to us. So he has to save us. And God has complete authority to do that whenever he wants, however he wants, as much as he wants because he is God. But then God has also given us the power and authority to be victorious in these things himself through the Holy Spirit of God. We just aren't operating in it. Listen, the Bible in the book of Matthews and all the gospels, but in the book of Matthews, it was talking about when Jesus went back to his hometown. And it said, a prophet, listen to this, and I'll move on after this. A prophet is not without honor, except in his own house, amongst his own family and his own people. And they said when Jesus was in his homeland, he could not do many works there because of their unbelief. Listen, listen to those that, that, that one scripture passage and listen to this. The Bible says in the book of James, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who give it to all men liberally and without reproach. But let him ask in faith, nothing doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord, for a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So, even though the Holy Spirit and the power, listen, Jesus was there, and the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst them, and he could not do many works there because of their unbelief. Praise God. I'm going to move on after this. Jesus was there in the flesh, and he could not do many works there because of their unbelief. The power of God was not available to them because they decided not to believe Jesus was who he was. They decided not to believe that Jesus operated in that power. They had one in, 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 the, in the Gospels and all of them, they went as far as to say that Jesus cast out devils by devils because they did not want to believe that he was the great power of God. And because of that, he could not do anything for them. He could not do many great works there because of their unbelief. How many of us is the Lord not able to operate in our lives on a daily basis in the power of God that is given to us because our logical mind, our rational mind, our understanding mind, our intelligent mind has told us that God don't work that way no more. And because of our unbelief and our doubt, God can't operate in our lives. If you're asking for God, for God for something, if you want to live according to this word, if you want to live according to the power that's available in this word, you have to believe. Because if you don't believe, do not think that you shall receive anything from the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You, Without faith and without belief, you cannot please God. God cannot operate fully in your life without you submitting to wanting to. See, it, it really starts there. I want to believe everything that this word has said is true. And I want to see these things manifested in my life. I don't care about it. In the end, in the end, when I'm alone in my prayer closet, when it's just me and Jesus starting, that's my foundation. I don't care about what my wife say, what pastor say, what my mentor says, what my denominational belief says, what my husband says, what my friend says, what the prayer group says. I don't care about anything. I care about this word of God and the Holy Spirit and the power of God being manifested through my life so I can be restored, I can be victorious, and I can walk and flex my authority just like the devil's walking and flexing his authority and tearing me up. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, but in all your wisdom, in all your getting, get an understanding. I can see it in the Word. It's here. So, the, the Bible tells me, so I should have the wisdom just from reading the Word. But I don't have an understanding. And that understanding has not grown into faith. 
And because of my lack of faith, I don't have the power. And one of the main things, one of the main things, I'm about to go to part two next. One of the main things that stops this power is our mind. In the book of Acts, as I go to part two, Jesus told the apostles and disciples what to do, to wait till they received the power. They trusted and believed that what Jesus said was true. So they went with one accord and they waited and they fasted and they prayed and they worshiped and they did all the things that they should do to put themselves in position to wait and hear from God and receive that power. They did not doubt. They did not question. They did not challenge. They did not think it don't make sense. They did not say God don't work that way no more. They did not say I'm too smart and too intelligent to believe some stuff like that. They trusted and believed. And because of their trust and belief, the power manifested themselves itself in their lives. It's not going to happen overnight. But for some of us, it may happen overnight. See, the great thing about God, God knows your heart. So God knows what you need to grow. God knows your calling, the one that he has for your life. But God can't do anything according to your faith, be it unto you. Because without your faith, it's impossible to please God. And if you don't have faith in the Holy Spirit and the power of God in this earth and operating in your life, as Jesus said it would, it would you're handcuffing the Holy Spirit, beloved. You're handcuffing the power of God to be able to operate freely, daily in your life. God can come in with his grace and mercy anytime he wants and do anything he wants, as I said. But just the daily manifestation of the Holy Spirit and power in your life, if you don't believe, if you don't have faith, if you don't put your logical mind to sleep, you will not win. Remember, God, God does still work that way. God does, does still do those things. You just have to believe. Now, the second part, we've all said it. It don't take that much. You know, you ain't got to do all that. I've heard a minister say that. I've heard people of God say that. Not a minister. I've heard people of God say that. You know, it don't take that much. All right. God knows my heart. Beloved, listen. The thief comes with to steal, kill, and destroy again. But Jesus came that you should have life and life more abundantly. Part two of this is we have to, the Bible says, you have been given liberty. You have been given freedom. But do not use your liberty as an occasion for your flesh. Do not allow the freedoms that we have through the grace of God, through the goodness of God, through the blood of Jesus, through I'm born again and I'm saved, cause you to feel like you can just do what you want to do, do it how you want to do it, do it when you want to do it, say what you want to say, do what you want to do, lie, cheat, steal, manipulate, fornicate, commit adultery, do all these evil things, talk behind people's back, uh, be selfish, be conniving, uh, being a hypocrite. Be a manipulator and all these different things that we do that we know are not right, that we know in our spirit, man, is not right, but yet we do them anyway and we think that it's okay and we think that it's almost psychotic to be doing something wrong continuously, habitually, and think that you're going to receive the fullness of Christ. Listen, when you're habitually sinning, purposely sinning, when you think, we all know this, I got time. You know, I, I'll get right when I get older. I'll get, you know, God knows my heart. God loves me. God ain't finished with me yet. I'm a work in progress because we want to give ourselves the permission and the authority to walk in our flesh and not in the spirit. The Bible says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit lusts against the flesh. These two are contrary to each other so that you would not do the things that you ought to do. The Bible says if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Spirit versus flesh. Faith versus logic. If we are walking in our flesh, if we are sinning, habitually sinning, continually sinning, living a life of sin and owning our sin, that's just who I am. That's just me. God, God working on me. And, and, now, and, and now I can, you know, the Holy Spirit and the power, I seek that. So that's not my, that's not my area. That's not where I fall. I don't have no lack of faith there. My faith that I'm trying to grow to in that 
is spooky, like some people would call it. But this right here, this walking in my flesh, oh, I've done that all my life. Just to everybody else out there, because I don't want you to think I'm casting stones at no one. I've walked in that all my life. Everything. Manipulation, lying, fornication, all that stuff. You know, I've done all that. Anger, temper, fighting, revering, wild parties, drinking, all that. That's me. So I can speak and I can tell you what I know for sure. You cannot walk in that and truly walk in the spirit of God and see the blessings and the gifts and the power and the fulfillment and the authority walk in your life on a daily basis. Again, God in his grace and mercy can pull, he's pulled me out of so many different things. So yes, even in your sin, God can save you. But in everything that God has saved me from, I still had to deal with what I did and the issues that it caused and the effects that it had on my life. Yeah, God saved me in the end, but I still had to deal with it. What I'm trying to say is, why deal with it? Why even put yourself in that position? Why not realize that, listen, what the devil does is the same thing he did to Adam, the same thing he tried to do to Jesus. He tries to take the word, twist the word, and make you think that the way the word is saying it is not accurate. But the way he wants to say it to you through the world, through false teachings, through false preachers, through watering down the word of God, through changing the word of God, to people thinking that they're so smart that they can logically change the word of God, that they can logically make the word of God make more sense. So to get likes, to get a congregation, to get applause, to get money, you know, to get invited certain places, they say certain things a certain way to soften it up a little bit, to make it easier for your ears and make it easier for your understanding to, to accept the Bible says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, they will heap up for themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they will be turned aside unto fables and be turned away from the truth. You be watchful in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist. He was Peter was talking, I mean, Paul was talking to Timothy and fulfill your ministry. That's from the book of Timothy. The Bible also says, now the spirit expressly says that in the latter days, some shall depart from their faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience sealed with a hot iron. Why are they able to with false doctrine? Oh, praise God. Why are they able to with false doctrine and with false words and with false teachings? Why is watering down the gospel? Why is changing the gospel? Why is changing Walking in the spirit, fulfilling the fruits of the spirit and not the lust of the flesh. Why is that a problem? Why, why can they, why can the world or why can all these false teachers and false understandings come in and squeeze the fruits of the spirit out of you or make you walk against the fruits of the spirit or make you grieve the Holy Spirit of God or make you quench the Holy Spirit of God, which at that point makes it impossible for you to be completely victorious. Why? Because of our fleshly, logical mind. Because we want to do it the way that we think makes sense to us. Because we want it to feel good. We want to be able to rationalize it. We want to be able to analyze it to a way that makes sense. Don't try to analyze the word, beloved. Just live the word. In order to have true victory. In order to have true authority. In order to truly be victorious over the enemy, we have to accept and understand the Holy Spirit and power of God. And then we have to walk in the fruits of the Spirit and we will not fulfill the lust of our flesh. It's like a tennis match. It's like you got faith and power over here going against logic in the flesh over here. Faith, power, and the Holy Spirit of God. This is Jesus. Logic, flesh, doing it your way, doing it the world's way. This is the devil. And they playing back and forth against each other. Trying to see who's going to win. But you can't be on this side and be on this side. Be not deceived. God shall not be mocked. Whatever a man sowed that, he shall also reap. If you sow to the, of your flesh, you shall of your flesh reap corruption. 
But if you sow to your spirit, you should of your spirit have everlasting life. We have to understand that. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians, second chapter, it says, For the natural mind does not receive the things of the Lord, for it is foolishness unto him. Nor can he understand these things, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual discerns all things, but yet he himself can be discerned by no one. It says, Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we, the Christians, we have the mind of Christ Jesus. We have the mind of Christ Jesus through the Holy Spirit and the power of God. But your natural, logical mind, your understanding, what makes sense to you, your wisdom, your education, what makes you feel comfortable. I don't like that part. That part that just don't, uh, something about that part, Pastor, I just don't, uh, that, that I just don't like that part. Like, at the end of the day, see, you know, I, I like to cut down to the nitty gritty. At the end of the day is, I don't like that part. That part don't make sense to me. That part don't jive with my denomination. That part don't jive with what my pastor said. That part don't jive with my emotions. That part don't jive with my logical mind, my wisdom, my mind, my will, my emotions, my intellect, my soulish realm. That part does not jive with my soulish realm, so I just don't accept it. Whatever it is, and whatever part you have done that, whatever part that you have given yourself freedom and liberty, the Bible says you have been given freedom and liberty, but do not use your freedom and liberty as an occasion for your flesh. Whatever you have given your, yourself freedom and liberty, whether it's non-belief or whether it's just sin that you own, that you know, but this is just me. I'm going to change. This is just who I am. Just got to accept me. Or I don't want to change. I don't believe I need to change. I don't have to change. It don't take all that. God doesn't say all that. God don't do that no more. God don't work like that no more. Beloved, at that point, then you are giving the devil room to destroy you, to kill, steal, and destroy. Again, as he challenged Adam, and Adam lost because he tricked Adam. Does the Bible really say that? Did God really say that? It wasn't even the Bible back then. Did God really say that, Adam? That's not what God meant. And then Adam, in his own logical, his own soulish realm, he started accepting that jump. He walked away from the power that he had in him. That he got directly from God. All Adam had to do was the same thing Jesus did. I rebuke you, Satan. You're an offense to me. Get away from me, man. Move on. Eve, you know better than that. Go back in the hut. We need to pray. We need to talk to God. Satan, get away. But Adam didn't do that. He let his soulish realm come in and he lost. Devil tried the same thing with Jesus. Well, this is what the Bible says. Well, this is what God says. This is what the Bible says. But Jesus knew the word. He knew who he was. He knew the power that he had. He rebuked the devil and he was victorious. My question to you is, are you going to be like Adam or are you going to be like Jesus? Are you going to walk in the Holy Spirit and the power of God, faith, or are you going to be led by your flesh and your logical mind? First Corinthians, as I close, says this. First Corinthians 2. I just read the end. But now I'm going to quote to you from the beginning. Paul said, when I came unto you, he was talking to the church at Corinth. Listen to this as I close. When I came unto you, I did not come unto you with excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I was determined not to know anything amongst you except for Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but it was with the Holy Spirit and the power of God, so that your faith would not stand in the wisdom of men, but your faith would stand in the power of God. Your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, your logic, your understanding, what don't make sense to you, what you don't like, your soulish realm. Your faith should stand in the power of God and what the word of God says. Spirit and power and faith. Spirit and power is one. And faith, the word of God versus logic, your flesh, your soulish realm, what makes sense to you, what makes you feel good. The Bible says this and I close. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly a book of Ephesians, third chapter, the prayer of, the prayer of Paul uh, to God for the church of Ephesus. Now unto you who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above anything we could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. Unto you, Father God, be the glory. 
the power that worketh within us. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Power. You have power and authority over serpents and scorpions and all the weapons of the enemy. And nothing shall of any means hurt you. For the power that is in us. The same power that Jesus used when he that God used when he raised Jesus Christ from the dead, that same power is available to us. We don't walk in it because we don't accept it. We don't believe it. It doesn't make sense. We have to understand that, beloved. Because we are in a time now, as I go, just humbly speaking, we are in a time, starting with COVID. We've always been in a time, but I want to use COVID because COVID is something that everybody can understand. And we know that since COVID, we're in a time now, man, that if you don't have your relationship right with God, if you're not seeking God daily yourself through this world, if you're not studying to show yourself approved, if you're not seeking to grow in your faith and in your personal relationship with God, you're not going to make it. You'll make it to heaven according that you believe and your spirit and your heart is right. Because just because you say you're a Christian, just because you were baptized when you were three, just because you know the songs, just because you know all the Christian sayings, don't mean you're going to get into heaven. Remember, Jesus gave us an example of this in the book of Matthew. When he said, in that day, many will say unto me, Lord, have I not prophesied in your name? Have I not cast out devils in your name? In your name, have I not done many, many good works? And I will say unto them, depart from you, depart from me, you who practice iniquity. I never knew you, which means you can do all this stuff. You can fool me. You can't fool yourself. You definitely can't fool the Lord. Get right with God, beloved. Don't go through what I had to go through. You know, don't suffer what I had to suffer. Don't have the Lord have to break you down to the point where it's one of those things. Well, okay, what you going to do, son? I don't want to see that for anyone. I pray and hope that all will just take heed to this message. Remember, you are not smarter than God. <laughs> yes. Uh, this is my mic drop. You, you are not smarter than God. I don't have a mic. I do have a mic. I can't get up to get it. I wish I had bought it here just for, you know, props. Props purposes. Just for aesthetic purposes. But you are not smarter than God. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways, said the Lord. This is the heaven that's high above the earth. So my thoughts high above your way, my, my thoughts high above your thoughts and my ways high above your ways. Your thoughts are not God's thoughts. You're not smarter than God. Don't try to reanalyze this word for God. Don't allow your logic, your logic, your logic, <laughs> your soulish realm, your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect to get in the way of the things of God. Allow the power of God to work through you through the word of God. Allow the Holy Spirit of God to come in and cleanse you so that you desire not to be in your flesh. The most amazing thing for me, I'm holding the mic now, for all of you who know me, the most amazing thing for me is the lack of desire to do and be the man that I used to be. I mean, listen, I was something. And, and listen, ha, praise God. I thought I was about to leave. I promise you I'm going. I would, in all that evil I was doing and all that craziness I was doing, I convinced myself that it was cool. I was ministering. I went back to the world. And in the world, in the world, in the club, out ministering to people, praying to people, praying with people, and had convinced myself that that was enough, that I was doing the work. Praise God. Praise God. This is for somebody. There's many people from the club that can say, I was their counselor. I mentored. I talked to people. I prayed with people. In the middle of the club, in, in, in between my vodkas, in between my hookah. So I'm in the world, but I'm convincing myself that I'm doing the work of the Lord. Now, I'm not Jesus. So I can't do it like Jesus did when it comes to being out there and being in the world and being in my flesh and operating in the flesh because the thief comes with the steal, kill, and destroy. I wasn't strong enough to do that. I, and logically, my mind told me I could, but in my flesh, I, I wasn't. I was out there, buck, but had convinced myself that it was okay. And it started here. And, and honestly, had I continued here praying and reading and ministering with people every day, and that was my whole goal when I went to the club, when I went out, 
is to spread the gospel and say, praise God. Somebody out there needs to hear this. If your whole purpose when you step out your house, when you're in the world, is to save the world. If you truly can say that, and there's no fleshly enjoyment that you're seeking, you're just seeking to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And praise God, don't let me stop you from doing what God has called you to do. Amen. But come on, let's be real. Let's be grimy. Let's keep it 100. Let's keep it a buck, as they say. That's come on. Come on. If you like me, you did it in between drinks. If you like me, you did it in between fleshly feel-good moments. So don't, don't do that. Because God knows your heart. Don't play that game with God. Don't play that game with yourself. In order to walk in authority. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> Somebody need to hear that, though. Somebody who know me. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, bro, yeah. You know, for people out there who knew me from before and you're listening to this, you know, all your doubts and all that stuff that you may have had, now when I'm talking to you, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, well, yeah. Because some of you out there doing that right now, you think that you can be in the world and still do what you want to do and it be okay. It's not okay. It's not biblical. It's not according to the word. No word, not the real word. Right now, we have so many different versions of the Bible out there. And the Bible, a version of the Bible right now doesn't have to go through any kind of counsel or anything like that to get approved. A man can take the Bible, dissect it, put it in his own words and print it on the Internet. He can get backing and he can turn it into a version of the Bible. We have so many different versions. So I'm not even getting into that. But what I am saying unto you is, listen, the Holy Spirit and the power of God, you know what's fleshly. You know what's spiritual. You know when certain things happen, you believe it or you don't believe it. You either accept it as God or your logical mind tries to wash it out. That's the devil. The devil tries to use logic with Adam. He won. He didn't try. He won. As I close, he tried to use logic with Jesus. He didn't win. We have the same spirit and power in us that Jesus has in him to be victorious against the devil. So will he use logic and flesh to defeat you or will you be victorious in Jesus Christ? Now the mic drop. Man, God bless you guys. Have a great day. I love you. Hope that all is well with you and your family. I look forward to seeing you again later on in this week. God bless. Bye-bye.